Hi, in this video I'm going to show you one of the newest features that was added to Serial Key Manager and that is the ability to block serial keys. If you're not already familiar with Serial Key Manager I'm going, I'm going to briefly say that it's a part of uh, SKGL and Software Protector projects which are by the way open source so you can get the code, code, source codes for those projects and they're free of charge and the main point is to protect .NET Framework applications using a, a licensing system. Uh, you can just search for them on Google, but now let's go straight away to the blocking uh, feature, so key blocking feature. So I'm just going to log in into my account and uh, I'm going to go to the list of current products and if you haven't created a new product you will have to do so but I'm going to start off with um, the product called software protector so here you can see a simple page and um, if you take a look at the new column that was added that is the block column uh, you can see that you either have a no value or a yes value and um, you can also distinguish this by just looking at the color so it's eye friendly as well so if it's red it's uh, blocked and if it's green it's unblocked and by default it's green or it's no which means the key is unblocked and can be used um, the important thing with this block feature is that it is very well, uh, well integrated into the online key validation uh, feature of the software protector and I can show you uh, of uh, serial key magic excuse me so if I go to the home tab and I open it in a new uh, tab here so if we press online key validation and we choose the product software protector we can actually uh, validate the keys and depending on if they are blocked or unblocked we'll get different results so it's very important then if your application is going to validate the key through this online interface or if you want to uh, validate it through a website you can see that you have a lot of control uh, through this interface because you can block and unblock keys in case um, you would realize that someone is using your key um, illegally or if someone obtained the key illegally or some something in that way so you can easily block and unblock. That's, I think it's very easy to use this interface. However, let's now look at the validation of a blocked key. So as an example, I'm going to show you what happens if I take a key that is uh, not blocked. So if a key is not blocked and can be found in the database, we're going to see some green text here. So the key is valid and can be found in our database. And if we show more info, we can get stuff like when it was created, expires, period, and so on, uh, and features. Uh, of course, if I would now use Software Protector, uh, if I would use Software Protector, and now let's copy the password here. Uh, if I would u have used Software Protector, now let's copy the key. The key is valid but cannot be found in our database. One of the things I want to tell you is that in the pr pr product validation module here, so when we validate keys, they have to be in the database. So in this case you can actually see that yes, okay, the key is valid but it cannot be found in the database and we get the info here. But when we validate the key through, this, uh, th through the product validation interface, the key has to be in the database and uh, all those stuff are for security reasons because um, when you've generated the key you've allowed that key to exist and if we would uh, allow the possibility of uh, all the keys to be uh, valid or it's uh, it's quite a large amount of keys uh, then uh, it w would be more vul vulnerable but in this case you just generate the keys you need the amount of keys you can always keep it to a restricted amount of keys that are going to be able to be valid but now let's go to the the point of this blocking thing the blocking feature 
so if you look here I have one key that is blocked and uh, if I would copy this again like I did with the previous key if I would copy it let's see what happens it says that the key is valid and can be found in our database however it's blocked and uh, we can actually find information. I mean, we can get information about the key when it was created and so on, but we can see that it's blocked. And uh, that's very important because now, remember, I think it was this key, yeah? So if I now unblock the key, I can put this here, and I can see the key is valid again. So it's very easy to just change it back and forth. Now, let's look at the product validation uh, part. Uh, I've already chosen that I want to use soft protector and by the way don't forget to uh, change the is public to be true because if you don't want your product to be able to be validated uh, through this interface by default you can't so you have to allow the product to be public before you can do so however in my case it's already done if you have some uh, uh, URLs that you would like to be redirected once the key is valid and uh, where, the, uh, where basically everything is going to be sent this basic information then you would have to enter those here however I would just like to see a simple text uh, oh and uh, it's important to choose soft detector here so I just want to see some text on serial key managers website so I copy the pa uh, copy the code here and uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to simply create a new notepad file or actually maybe it would be easier to just um, so let's take an online editor instead so here I paste the code and I'm going to take um, let's see let's just take as a reference a, a, a key that that is supposed to be valid uh, let's see so this key is supposed to be valid and it's not blocked so when we put it here the key is valid and that is exactly what I wanted to write on the on that screen however if we now take the, the keys that is so if we now block the key so let's um, block it so now it's blocked uh, I think you'd have to So now, if we take the same key, where's the key? Ah, here's the key. If we now take the same key, we get the message, your key is not valid or blocked. So uh, we don't really tell the user if the key is valid or if it's blocked. And um, uh, that is also for security reasons, but you can adjust that. However, that that was it. So, the blocking feature. It's not that fancy, I think, but however, it serves its purpose. Uh, and instead of deleting your keys, uh, it um, blocks them. So in case you would uh, change your mind and uh, uh, allow the key to be used again, you can simply unblock it. But if you don't want the key uh, to be um, used again, uh, and you would would have wanted it to be deleted. You just don't um, you jo don't unblock it. That's uh, uh, I think that's the simplest strategy in this case, uh, because just in case to because it would be very strange uh, and also vulnerable if the key would be deleted in case um, uh, someone would gain access to your account uh, and if you would have. Um, uh, if someone would know the password and get into the account, it would not, still not be able to ruin the entire thing. They would only be able to block or unblock keys. Uh, however, on other ways, uh, on other, uh, if you look at this from other perspectives, I think um, uh, that wouldn't be. It wouldn't be. It is not a problem as long as you don't write the, down the password anywhere and if you keep it secret. That's the important thing with uh, this interface. Otherwise, I'd like to thank you for watching this presentation and uh, or it was more like a video I think, but however, thank you very much for watching and uh, if you'd like to check out more about Software Protector, uh, I'm just going to give you a link here uh, softprotector.clisford.net
so here's the online interface you can uh, get some screenshots uh, and you can find the source code at at the codeplex website uh, or if you just go to SKGL project so this is SKGL and uh, here you'll find a lot of do documentation about um, uh, serial key uh, serial key generating library uh, which would help you when you want to Im implement this into your application however it's uh, otherwise yeah it's straightforward you just press help so if you need any help you just press help and you will be redirected to the specific pages uh, on our support page and uh, Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, please um, go to the con contact page or uh, uh, write on our forum. You might also want to just write a comment on below this video. However, I strongly re recommend to write it on uh, on the Codeplex page or on our support page uh, because it would simplify the pro uh, the uh, the support. Uh, process. So if you, if you, there is a question about this website, or if it's a question about the algorithm itself, and for documentation purposes, it would be much easier. If the, it would be at one place. Again, thank you very much, and uh, have a nice day.